Well, we're in Holy Week now, a really special week for us as Christians. And the question I want to ask you is, what will be the song that you will sing this Holy Week? The accounts from the scripture tell us that Holy Week begins with a song and, as it were, ends with a song. It begins with Palm Sunday, with the crowds crying, Hosanna. And it ends on Good Friday with the crowds shouting, crucify him. Let me read from Luke's account of that entry into Jerusalem, where Jesus rides a donkey into Jerusalem as a king coming into his city. Luke 19, verse 37. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles that they had seen. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. The praise that was be given to Jesus was due his name. It was right. It was reflecting that he is the King of Kings that he is God himself here in human form. And it was right that he was worshipped as he entered into his city, the city of Jerusalem. And Jesus even says that if that praise had not been released, the stones themselves would have been unable to cry out in praise by God because this was a moment that praise was due. And friends, for us who know Jesus Christ, there is never a day when praise is not due. But just like those first disciples, they experienced pressure from the surrounding environment to stop that cry of praise and to change it. And to some degree, the, the Pharisees succeeded in doing that. They, they moved the crowd from praising on Palm Sunday to shouting crucify on Good Friday. Now, partly that was because of disappointment. Jesus hadn't fulfilled the revolution from the Roman occupation that they were longing for in a king that was going to come and rescue them. But we live today in times when we might be really disappointed, where we might be struggling. And the question is, will that rob us of our cry of praise? Will it stop us shouting out the praise that is due to Jesus? Or will we stay true to the, tr the deepest truth of our lives, that Jesus is the King and he is due our praise? So what song are you going to sing? As somebody has said, we are Easter people and Hosanna is our song. So here's five reasons at the begin beginning of this day, just to encourage you that this is why you can praise God today. It doesn't matter what your circumstances are. They may well be tough and we're praying for you if that's the case. But allow praise to come from your lips today. Jesus is worthy of it. Allow praise to rise up in your hearts as you hear of these reasons to praise him, no matter what is going on around you. So the first reason from Easter that we should praise Jesus is that he is alive. He is with you this morning. You woke this morning being loved by God. You woke this morning knowing that Jesus loves you, has saved you and is with you. So you do not wake alone and abandoned or isolated, but you wake in the presence of God who loves you. Jesus is alive. Spend time with him today. Live your life with him today. Secondly, Easter tells us that your sins are forgiven. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And in heaven, as, as they declare the truth of that, the, the angels and the, the, uh, and the gathering throng of elders and others around him cry, worthy, worthy, worthy is the Lamb to be praised. And so we today know that our sins are forgiven, the price has been paid for our sin, and we as forgiven people should bring him an offering of praise because no other God is like him who would give his life to save us from our sins. Thirdly, death is defeated. And so the grave is empty. 
Death had lost its sting and we know that one day we will live forever in the glory of God's presence where there is no more pain or suffering uh, and where God's kingdom reigns in perfection. While we suffer today where the kingdom is yet to come in its fullness, let's not forget death is defeated. Our greatest enemy is, is dealt with and so we should bring Jesus praise for he has risen from the dead. Fourthly, that Jesus is reigning. The fact that he has died and the grave is empty and that he has risen again, never to die again, means that as he ascends from this earth, he ascends into a place of glory and he is reigning over all things. It may feel like at the moment that he's not reigning, but nothing can ever take him from his position of all authority over the whole of creation. His kingdom is yet to come in fullness, which is why we suffer and struggle in this world. But one day it will come in its fullness and there is no issue today with his reign. So as you pray today, as you live today, you can know that the one that you've put your trust in has all authority and power and nothing can threaten him. And he can bring his authority and power into your life and to care for you. And finally, Jesus will come again in the resurrection, there is the promise of his return. He ascends to heaven, promising them that he will come again. And so we know that this world is not all there is to live for. We know that the suffering we endure today is nothing compared with the glory that will one day be revealed in us. And one day Jesus is coming. Let's be ready for him. Let's be ready with a song of praise on our lips this week. So. We are an Easter people. Hallelujah is our song. Let's live with praise, uh, characterising our life in these challenging times. And this week particularly, let's dig deeper into the truths of all that Jesus did for us at Easter and let praise flow from our lips. Let me pray. Lord Jesus, we do praise you and we worship you. Lord, there is none like you. We give you glory for all that you've done for us at Easter, for dying for us, for forgiving our sins, for defeating death. And now as you reign in glory, we come to you and we give you our worship. We offer you ourselves again. We lay our lives down as a living sacrifice, for there is none like you and we worship you. May you be glorified by how we live today and in this week. And we pray, Lord, that you would be at the heart of our lives. And that this Easter we would reflect the truth that has not in any way been threatened or changed by our current circumstances. That you are the saviour and you are the king and there is none like you worthy of our praise. Amen.